All right, so I'm a big advocate of not using ND filters with action cameras because it just kind of cancels out the convenience factor of these little devices. You pick them up and you shoot. However, these are very capable cameras. I mean, you can get a lot out of them. Uh, and the auto modes are great, but if you want to take it to the next level and get some of that motion blur, of course, you got to use ND filters. The catch with that in action cameras is the stabilization. Action cameras have awesome stabilization. However, that stabilization is based on really high shutter speeds. So when you're putting an ND filter on, you're taking that shutter speed down to like 1 50th, 1 20th, and that kind of just eliminates the stabilization. So today, we're gonna test out the stabilization of the DJI Osmo Nano using ND filters. We're gonna see how the motion blur looks, we're gonna see how good the stabilization is, and we're gonna go through various shutter speed settings to see if, you know, how it looks with the 180 degree rule, and also how it looks maybe if we have to bump it up just a little bit to see if we still get some motion blur out of a little bit of a higher shutter speed. So right now, this is the camera in full auto, 4K, 24 frames per second. If you go like this, there is no motion blur because everything is just very choppy because that shutter speed is so high. So let's get to the ND filters. All right, now we have an ND16 on, uh, 150th shutter speed. I have rock steady completely off, no camera stabilization on. A pretty uneven surface out here. Let's see how this looks, just regular walk. Groovy. Still at the 150th shutter speed. Should be getting some motion blur here. Let's check out the stabilization. I'm just gonna be walking on a pretty uneven surface out here. Okay, so here we are, 24 frames per second, ND16 filter on, but the shutter speed has been bumped up to one over 100. Still have rock steady on. The idea is that a higher shutter speed and the rock steady should work together to help the stabilization a little bit at the cost maybe of a little bit of motion blur. We'll see how that looks. Gonna run a little bit. rad all right still at 24 frames per second now the shutter speed has been moved up to 1 over 120. we're we still getting any motion blur at this level let's do a little bit of an aggressive walk here I'm out of breath. All right, and the final test, 24 frames per second, one over 200 shutter speed. This is about as high as I wanna go before I feel like we're just probably not gonna have any really good motion blur. So that's how this looks with a pretty aggressive walk across some rocks. Check it out. Cool, 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 let's talk about it. And just so you know, right now, this is being filmed on the DJI Osmo Nano in full manual mode. This is at 150th shutter speed. So in the footage you just saw, I was using a KNF Concept ND filter. And one thing that really stuck out right away is how much it changed the color of the image because I had the same LUT over the top of all of the footage, but when that ND filter went on, it was a uh, a lot different. So that's wild, but I liked the way the footage looked. Anyway, I was pretty surprised with how decent the footage looked at 150th shutter speed with rock steady on. You can see in the footage that I am pretty stable centered up in the image there using that selfie stick, but the background is pretty jittery, which unless you're looking for it, you might not notice that. If someone has just watched your videos, they probably won't even pay attention to that. I would be happy using that footage. I can use that. Now with the rock steady off at 150th shutter speed and an ND filter on, the footage looks pretty jittery. It's pretty shaky. It's not really that good. And just out of curiosity, here's what that footage with the rock steady off would look like stabilized using just the basic stabilizing option in Final Cut Pro. Done.
don't love that. Now, when it comes to the higher shutter speeds, one over 100 and one over 120th, they actually maintain some pretty decent motion blur. I would totally use that footage. But once we get up to the one 200th shutter speed, there's still motion blur. You can see that it's in there, but the footage overall just kind of starts looking a little choppy, kind of like it, the camera does when it's in auto mode. It's not bad. I mean, like I said, there's still motion blur in there, and that's what you're going for when you have an ND filter on in the first place. But compared to... Uh, 1 over 100 and 1 over 120. They just look a little more natural to me. So that's that. That's a little walking test. Now we're going to up the ante a little bit. We're going to put an ND filter on the Osmo Nano and put it on a motorcycle. An extremely shaky motorcycle. So check it out. This is 4K 24 frames per second in fully auto mode. No ND filter. This is the camera just as it is. 24 frames per second with the shutter speed at 1 over 50 and Rocksteady is off. There's no stabilization on. Alright, this is 4K 24 frames per second in manual mode. The shutter speed is set to 1 over 50. Four frames per second. The shutter speed is now at 1 over 100. Twenty-four frames per second. Shutter speed is at 1 over 120. Four frames per second, shutter speed is one over two hundred. Got to be honest, I don't really care for the look of the footage. Um, on the motorcycle with an ND filter. It gives you a good sense of speed, if that's something that you're going for, but for my personal taste, it's just a little too shaky. Now keep in mind here, we're talking about an absolutely tiny little camera mounted on a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Have you ever been on a Harley? Those things shake. When you ride a Harley for long enough, you absolutely feel it. So the fact that this footage comes out semi-usable at all, is impressive to me. But when it comes to using the Osmo Nano on a motorcycle with an ND filter, I can take it or leave it. Honestly, I'm fine shooting in auto. Unless you have those specific cases where you want to convey some sense of speed and get some motion blur, you can do that with this. It's just, for me, it's too much shake. All right, so if you're still with me on this, if you're still watching this video, congrats, you are a nerd. But I am too, so it's nice to have someone to talk to about this. Okay, so how is the stabilization on the DJI Osmo Nano while using ND filters? I mean, it depends on the situation. If you're walking with the camera on a selfie stick and you wanna, you know, adhere to the 180 rule of having 1 50th shutter speed while shooting at 24 frames per second, you can get some really solid footage. I was surprised. And I'm sure, you know, if you ninja walk, if you aren't walking on an incredibly uneven surface like I was out at Red Rock Canyon where there's rocks, I mean, I put this thing through an extreme test. If you're walking on a flat surface, I could really see that being a very viable option if you really want motion blur, that more natural look in your footage. Just make sure to leave rock steady on. And of course, if you have the camera just mounted somewhere, like I do right now, just sitting on this desk, a static shot, you're gonna get great motion blur. Now, on a motorcycle, especially a very large, shaky bike like I have, the results aren't so good, impressive. I don't know, I'm just not a fan of the ND filter look on a bike, really. For my bike, your motorcycle or your bicycle, whatever you mount this on, your moving thing is probably gonna be a lot different than 
a big shaky touring Harley Davidson bike. I mean, these were extreme tests to show you that in normal situations, you're probably going to get really decent stabilization out of this with an ND filter. What it comes down to is this. You will get the most out of this camera and cameras like it, action cameras, if you put an ND filter on them. That's if you consider the most, of course, being a 180 degree rule with motion blur. But man, it is just way more fun to not use ND filters on action cameras. It's less hassle, it's less work, it's less to carry around. But I still get ND filters for all of my action cameras all the time. I like to have that, you know, because there are times when you do want that motion blur look and you just can't really get it as good as you can with an ND filter. You can do things in post-processing, you can, but it just looks better when you do it in camera, in my opinion, most of the time. So. Can you get stable footage on the DJI Osmo Nano in manual mode using an ND filter and adhering to the 180 degree rule? Well, yeah, sometimes. But that's it. Thanks for checking this video out. I appreciate it. If you want to see more content like this, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And by more, I mean more exciting content. There will probably be a lot better things. This was just a test you know, for those that want to know. One of those people being me. So I'm glad I did it and I'm glad you checked it out and I hope you found it useful. Appreciate you checking this out and I'll see you down the road. Down the road, probably in full auto mode if I'm on a bike.